Hello there, my fellow agents of the Golden Throne, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today's adventures are gonna take us somewhat off the beaten path, as we will be talking about a rather obscure topic, and some events concerning it from the grander Imperial Inquisition playlist. This topic is the so-called Xanphite faction from within the Holy Ordos. This will be a multiple part mini-series, as we will be talking about the history of this faction and a few other interesting things. Unfortunately, there are next to no artworks on this obscure topic, so I'm gonna have to use some general Inquisition artworks. And I'm sorry for that. All that being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? To the Xanphites, the Warp and its denizens are things to be enslaved rather than denied. To them, chaos is no less an enemy that must be fought and destroyed, but one that ultimately should be tamed, bound to humanity's will, and even put to work in the Imperium's service. Born from the paradoxical position inherent in the role of the Inquisition, Xanphites believe that it is the Inquisition's sacrosanct freedom to understand and even wield that which is forbidden in order to better fight it. Xanphism remains one of the most insidious and most ominous of all the doctrines, and the movement itself arguably the most ancient, powerful, and above all, dangerous of the Inquisition's radical factions. Indeed, to some, the words Radical and Xanphite are one and the same. When a Puritan Inquisitor ponders the Xanphite with their dark lore and darker secrets, they see an enemy that is a thousand times worse than a mutant, a heretic, or a crazed witch. And they would not be wrong either. Xanthism, like mentioned, is one of the oldest philosophies of the Inquisition. It is named after Inquisitor Master Zaranchek Xanthus, brought to trial and eventually executed as a heretic in the early 32nd millennium. Xanthus was accused by a cabal of inquisitors who had united to accuse him particularly of chaos worship. Although he professed his innocence strongly with great dignity, he was eventually burned at a stake, and many of his acolytes and former apprentices were hunted down by the purge that followed. Throughout his entire trial, Xanthus maintained that despite the many malefic relics found in his possession, and the vast repository of dark lore he had amassed, he had remained pure, both in spirit and in purpose. He admitted that on occasion he did utilize the forces of the warp and the powers of chaos to achieve goals in the Imperium's service. By virtue of his rank and record, Xanthus's trial was held by the Great Conclave itself, and regardless of his eventual conviction, his skilled oratory and undoubted eloquence found some resonance in many who listened. His ideas were to be picked by other inquisitors in the following years, and within one century of his death, a core of self-professed Xanphites had become a vocal and controversial minority within the Inquisition, one which also risked being excommunicated en masse for their views. Perhaps the most famous Xanphite Inquisitor in the history of the early Calixian Conclave was Angelique de Falk, a woman whose great cunning and implacable intelligence marked her out from the days as an acolyte of the Ordo Zenos. De Falk, newly raised to the Rosette, was one of a number of Inquisitors assigned to the fledgling Calixis sector, in the middle of the 39th millennium in the aftermath of the Angevin Crusade. This period, known to the Calixian historians as the Great Founding, was far from an untroubled one, as war and anarchy still blighted the area. The mass colonial expeditions from the overpopulated worlds of the distant Segmentum Solar, and from nearer in the troubled Mandragora and Gehenna regions, created serious problems of their own. The newly born Calixian Conclave soon had its hands full, weeding out the corrupt chaff from the good wheat in the population of the sector, and helping manage the difficult transition from High Crusade to stable civil rule. The Falk took to her duty with great bravery, and won for herself considerable fame within the Conclave, smashing cult after cult, battling human renegades and mutant uprisings. In particular, the Falk is credited with exterminating one of the last nests of the warp-worshipping Yuvav, 
a Zeno's race which had bitterly contested the Crusades' later stages. It is recorded to have caused some acrimony when the Falk crossed the floor to join the Ordo Malleus instead. This left her erstwhile comrades in the Ordo Zenos somewhat aggrieved to lose the famed and influential Inquisitor to what was at the time a political rival. She quickly mastered the arts of the Demon Hunter and rose quickly within the ranks of the Calixian Malleus, demonstrating a mastery of the occult lore that swiftly had Inquisitors of far longer service seeking her out and asking for counsel in the matters of the Inferno. As time went on, however, she demonstrated increasingly radical Xanphite leanings. Rumors began to circulate that she was able to command dark warp spirits at will, and that she had replaced her left eye, lost in battle with a chaos sorcerer, with a baleful orb torn from the skull of a half-demon thing worshipped as a god among the steaming jungles of Fedrid. Her success against malign forces, however, only grew in number and scale as she and her acolytes cast down the first and most terrible flowerings of the cult of Baphomel on Scintilla. By her own hand, the Falk destroyed the black beating heart of the Nightmare Hulk Spectre of Winter, which had terrorized Imperial shipping since it was first sighted during the voyages of Solomon Harlock. After two centuries of service within the Calixian Conclave, and a track record that arguably has never been equaled by her successors, Angelique the Falk was the leading power of the Ordo Malleus in the entire sector. Always she refused to have this fact officially acknowledged, and she declined the appellation of Inquisitor Lord, which her peers repeatedly offered her despite her growing sinister reputation. During this long tenure, she acted as mentor to more than a dozen acolytes, raised in turn to Inquisitor rank of their own only ensuring that a strong strain of Xanthism in the Calixian sector endures to this day. The Falk's successors, in turn, produced their own legends. These include Requis Corina, the first to battle the Pilgrims of Hate and hold the bloody solstice on Malfi. The infamous Witchmaster Inquisitor Saldavan, who slew the Psy Abomination of the Bloodmind on Wartorn Malice. And the malignant Cool Harkas, perhaps the most suspected and feared of the current Calixian Xanthites. But her gravest test and the act that was to grant both glory and infamy within the Inquisition was yet to come for Lady Angelique. In 799 M39, the hive city of Atropos on Solomon, a citadel with a population of more than 100 million, went mad in one single night. The culmination of a nightmarish plot long in the making, this terrible night of insanity and wanton murder was the work of the so-called master sorcerer Alrak the Broken. This guy was an old foe of the Calixian Conclave, born beyond the Emperor's light, founder of a dozen cults, and author of the thrice-cursed grimoire of the Liber Noctis Eternum. Ulrak had come to Solomon to kill the vital imperial world in order to pay off a dark pact he had struck centuries before with the hellish forces beyond. As the death toll rose steadily into the tens of thousands and Atropos tore itself to shreds, violent chemstorms engulfed Solomon, and madness began to leap from ship to ship even in orbit. At the center of this whirlpool of violence, Ulrak took the High Prelate's throne in the gore-spattered Cathedral of St. Morgana, at the pinnacle of the Hive Spire. Thus he began his ascension to demonhood as the gates holding back the warp began to shatter. Plunging through the storm like a bolt from the heavens came Angelique de Falk's gun cutter. It had been pure chance that she was in the region, in the Solomon system, taking on supplies in preparation for a long journey to a distant inquisitorial fortress. Ill prepared for a major confrontation, she was only accompanied by a number of junior acolytes in training and her own personal staff. Although long past the prime of her life, the Falk's mind was sharper and her power greater than ever. So it was that in order to save Solomon and countless imperial lives, three of the Falk's acolytes gave themselves up to damnation aboard her ship, in hurried rituals of terrible power. The gun cutter smashed its way into the twisted cathedral to confront Ulrak at the moment of his dark apotheosis and the Falk and the three bound demon hosts confronted the ascending arch-sorcerer. The details of what occurred in that battle have never been revealed, 
but it is known that Ulrak was torn asunder at the moment of his triumph and Atropos was scoured clean. The shattered body of the Falk was borne away by her last remaining sorrowful daughter, and she was never seen again. Whether she lived or died afterwards remains a mystery. It was revealed at the end of the 41st millennium that many mechanisms of the Golden Throne have been developing technological failures beyond the ability of the Tech Priests of Mars to repair. Because of this, it seems possible that the Emperor's body will die at some time in the near future. Depending on the many myths and fevered predictions which have come to dominate the Imperium's so-called time of ending, this unwelcome event will either destroy or actually save the Imperium, and the galaxy as a whole from the destruction brought by chaos. With the discovery of the Golden Throne's deteriorating state, a dozen contingency expeditions have been launched by the Cult Mechanicus, including a Xanphite war procession of the Inquisition sent through the Exubris portal into the webway. The Xanphites fought through Harlequin troops and demon hordes alike, before reaching their intended destination. In the grave cold oubliettes of the Haemonculi covens beneath the city of Comora, a sinister bargain was somehow struck. And this story, I believe, is actually the plot of a novel titled Vaults of Terra, The Carrion Throne, written by Chris Wright. I will not be spoiling any of that story today, though. I have read it, however, and it is a pretty good read, and I do recommend it. If anyone from the Black Library actually watches this, you're welcome. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the mysterious and dangerous Xanphite faction within the Inquisition for today. There are actually more stories concerning these fellows, as well as some offshoot factions like the Fenonites or the Horusians. Hopefully I will get to talk about them as well in the near future. If you folks have any thoughts or questions, on the other hand, do feel free to write them down in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects